Hello everybody, welcome to Matrix Live. Coming to you live from the Bindax in the West London offices of Open Market where we're squatting at the moment. So, probably now I'm Matthew. And I'm Odine. And um, this is the very first of our Patreon updates and Libra Pay and indeed Bitcoin donor updates to try to give you an update on what we did um, this week in the world of Matrix. We should apologize because we're pretty tired and it's been a nightmare, never ending week. And here we are sitting in the office at seven o'clock on a beautiful summer Friday night. And uh, we're Busty still. Day. Oh, yeah, yeah, on July the 14th, <laughs> indeed, for our francophones out there. And yeah, it's. It's been a really interesting week, to say the least. Um, little, it's, it seems incredible that only last Friday, so literally a week ago, did we launch the um, donation drive to support Matrix mm -hmm. after we got the interesting news that our funding had been cut by our corporate overlords. Um, but um, we're here, and we're still here for now. And thank you to everybody who has donated um, so far. So um, what's the latest on the funding, Amandine? Well, we've reached uh, $1,750 a month from both uh, Patreon and Libera Pay. Yay! And uh, we got uh, about 225 I think, dollars from Bitcoin with the current exchange rate, so God knows where that will be going. Yes. But, um, yeah, we're going to end up making millions on Bitcoin inflation, <laughs> <laughs> regardless of what people do for donations. But thank you so much so, to yeah. everybody who thank has um, donated so far. Um, so on the Patreon side of things, that basically is it's getting towards a point. Our first goal of being able to pay for half a person to work on Matrix mm. some full time, which really makes a huge, huge concrete difference to where we would be otherwise. Um, in well, it's we're not entirely sure when the current funding is completely going to disappear, but at that point, it's basically going to be paying for the salary for somebody to focus um, full time on Matrix. And obviously we need uh, more companies uh, helping us and sponsoring the work we're doing. So especially if someone out there is building on top of Matrix and hasn't reached out yet because uh, we know it happens, uh, please don't hesitate because if you don't sponsor, well, you might miss uh, Dendrite or Dendrite will come in two years from now <laughs> instead of a few months away. So uh, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, I mean, basically, we need to fund about nine people of the current team um, who are working on Matrix in the long term independently um, somehow. And whilst um, Patreon is obviously going to hopefully get us at least one person, we really are dependent on companies building on top of Matrix for the other eight or however many people it is. So please do reach out. Although we do have our first corporate sponsor to announce, and we'd like to do a huge shout out to the lovely people at UpCloud, um, who host the yeah. matrix.org home server, which, as I'm sure you realize, is not a mean feat. They, <laughs> yeah. they are very, very kindly sponsoring us all of the hosting fees for all of matrix.org right now. And that includes um, two servers with 20 cores and 128 gig of RAM and terabytes of disk space which is actually able to run the matrix.org synapse. So uh, they also have awesome support and have been incredibly helpful to the project. And we should mention that um, if you go and use UpCloud for hosting your own Matrix home server, um, you get a bunch of um, credit free for them. I yeah. forget how much it is. I think it's 20%, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, we need, uh, um, no, I think it's like $20. The we should probably find out what we that will. is before the next <laughs> um, uh, recording. But, but um, yeah, basically, go check out UpCloud. They're great. There is a link from our uh, website uh, with uh, uh, linking directly to the offer. That, I think it is uh, upcloud.com uh, slash matrix. Yeah. So huge thanks to UpCloud, but that's literally only one company so far. I've spoken to a couple of others, but please, folks, um, come and get on board. So meanwhile... Um, In order to be able to actually process all that money, we're uh, working on setting up the Matrix at all Foundation. Yeah, so that should be ready next week as a proper non-profit entity at last, as we've been promising for the last well, three years. But now we have a really, really good reason to finally set it up in terms of receiving the donations and ensuring it's um, tax efficient um, um, in terms of being able to go straight towards paying for folks to work on it. Anyway, that's probably enough about money. Let's talk about the fun stuff, um, which is Matrix itself. So on the um, 
Matrix projects um, in its own right. Um, the main stuff happening this week on Synapse has been performance um, work from Eric, who has been optimizing the push rules. And uh, it turns out the push takes up an awful lot of CPU. So basically, two thirds of the CPU time, whenever you send a message, is spent trying to work out what enough you should do to push all the various different people in a room. And uh, there's been some caching on that, but it's been relatively um, uh, naive, shall we say. Um, but I hear as of this afternoon that we've improved the efficiency of the caching there from about 5% of the push notification logic being cached to about 95%. So this should hopefully have a huge impact in the amount of CPU it takes and the actual physical latency it takes to send a message. Um, Eric desperately wanted to deploy it at 5 o'clock on a Friday <laughs> afternoon, uh, but for once we did the responsible thing to go and uh, wait <laughs> until Monday morning. Well, so just, it was enough to tell him that if it was all broken, he would spend his weekend on it, so I think he had enough last week. <laughs> it was okay. Uh, so what else was happening on um, Synapse itself? Basically, Eric is the only person uh, working on Synapse right now. And um, also lots of work on the group server, but we'll talk more about that um, with respect to Riot. Meanwhile, Dendrite is um, going great guns. Uh, we've had Mark, who's been hacking away on the invite logic and tracking membership, which is probably one of the single biggest remaining large bits of unimplemented infrastructure in there, uh, which I believe is almost ready. And meanwhile, Brendan, who's joined us um, in a rather interesting point of the project lifecycle as an intern for the next couple of months, um, has been working on doing the profile API and logout APIs and um, other sort of smaller API bits and dendrite. So we're expecting to see lots of the kind of lower hanging um, fruit APIs getting done soon. So on the client side, uh, well, given um, Riot is mainly built on the client SDKs, we have to mention it here. And uh, we have RT, so Rich Tech Editor, uh, Text Editor, which is out of the lab. So now it will be embedded, um, by well, available by default. And this is undeveloped, so we haven't released it on the normal app yet. Mm. But this is a huge deal because Rich Text Editing um, it's an enormous project that was started by Avril Dasgupta and his GSOP project um, last year. And it, we got it about 90% of the way there, and then Avril ran out of GSOP time. And since then, it's basically been on hiatus. But in the last couple of weeks, Luke um, picked it up and has been fixing all of the remaining bits. And as of right now, I have been using it for the last two weeks. Me too. <laughs> and other than a couple of times when I've punched the screen, um, it's been working really, really well. Yep. And in fact, today, I think the final uh, round of bug fixes landed. Uh, yeah, today, uh, especially, I think it's uh, it's working really well now. So uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yep, we needed a bit more performance work on it probably. Um, and there was something else which was a bit weird. What is it? Oh yes, if you select things on the rich text editor, you don't get to see a highlight um, right. um, visual, which is really unintuitive, because if you go and do a smiley, hit tab, and the smiley gets turned into an emoji or something, and then you say, oh, I don't like that emoji, I want to delete it, I at least always hit Command A or Control A to select it, but you don't see the elect selection, so it looks as if nothing's happened, and it's and it's this terrible disaster. Um, but that's basically, if that's a bit the worst problem we can find with it, that's a that's good probably, position to yeah, be in. Probably good. Uh, also very exciting, the groups are coming together. Uh, the UI is really uh, getting there and uh, we're uh, progressing high speed. So hopefully this will be out uh, pretty soon, at least on develop. So I'm looking forward to play with this. It's going to be a huge change. So the group screen looks like a bit like the home page actually on the Riot web app um, nowadays. So it tells you the name of the group, an icon for the group, arbitrary HTML about what that group's showing, then a list of the rooms in the group, highlighted, and then highlighted a list of users who are a member of that group. And then on the right hand side you get a list of all of the users who actually participate in the group. So it's basically like a mini home page and you use them to define communities. We'll probably call it communities yeah. in the app itself. Yeah. And honestly, it's going to change everything. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So we're all going to have these little flare badges next to um, 
our um, uh, names to say what groups we're members of in rooms which are in turn members of that group. So you can imagine going to Matrix HQ and see me going and talking away in the middle of the night and um, you'll have a little badge next to my name saying Matthew Core Matrix Team Member or whatever and um, that in its own right would be useful <laughs> in terms of trying to work out who the hell is who. Yeah, even for discovery or uh, uh, who is using Matrix and stuff, it's, uh, yeah. It also gives us kind of Discord and Slack um, mm -hmm. style semantics um, because effectively each of these groups can act as a sub uh, a group of rooms effectively. So if you want to have your sort of more lockdown community for a particular project with a set of rooms, you just go and create the group for it, you point people at it and it will feel just like being in a particular server on Discord or a particular Slack on Slack or whatever. And uh, next up on this side is um, improving the management of the bridge users, which today is quite of a mess, and um, hopefully we'll uh, manage to fix that uh, pretty soon. Yeah, it's the whole, how do you find Nextsurf on Freenode, and how, where's my admin room gone, and um, you know, if you want to talk to somebody you know is on Freenode or an IRC network or whatever, at the moment if you search for them by name, who knows whether you're going to be able to find them or not, um, is it going to be the right person, are they going to be online, all that sort of thing. So there's about six related issues which we'll be getting to next. And this is where the flare come back and uh, oh, yeah. will help a lot in terms of saying this this user is talking from Slack, this one from IRC. Yeah, so at last there will be no more crappy IRC in brackets yeah. <laughs> after people's display names causing hatred and um, letter bombs to us as people complain. Um, the, when they autocomplete an IRC user from Matrix, they get the colon IRCs. Instead, it will just be, if you're talking from IRC, you're a member of the IRC group, therefore you have a little flare badge for IRC after your name, and that's good enough. Yeah. Uh, next up, integrations. Yeah, why not? Again, a lot of fun stuff coming up. So the deal on integrations is they're changing enormously, and a lot of the work that is going into this is um, trying to take Matrix beyond just a chat and VoIP system, but also a way to really tie together all of the stuff you might want to do in a collaborative, communication-y kind of way. We call it realize the potential. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know how much we want to give away on this, because mm, yeah. um, we've got to have stuff to talk about in the next podcast. And uh, they're not ready yet, but you people hunting around on slash develop on Riot can probably see some of the things coming. Suffice it to say that we're looking at embedding actual applications as iframes into Riot um, so that you can create dashboards of proper apps in there. So we're not limited to crappy command line interfaces and plain commands or Slack style slash commands. But you know, if you want to work with GitHub, then you have a little bit of GitHub sitting right there in the middle of your page and you can go and click on it and play with it and all that sort of thing. So there's been a lot of um, uh, work going on on that. Um, the deal is that you'll be able to host these widgets or apps, we don't know what we're going to call them yet, um, yourself, or you can obviously get them from Scalar, which is the code name of the um, integration manager that um, runs to go and um, support these things. Yeah. This will all get relaunched sometime real soon now, uh, when it's ready, probably a matter of weeks, mm -hmm. hopefully, um, and well, it, it could be really interesting. In practice, though, groups are probably going to take priority, um, because we obviously need them to go and recognise everybody who's donated, mm -hmm. um, so um, that's basically what we've got coming up. Yeah, I think that's about it for yeah. now. Okay, well, thank you again, everybody, for donating. Uh, you have no idea how much it means yes. that we have a community who's willing to support the project when things start to get a bit rough here. And it's certainly going to be interesting um, for us. Who knows what office we're going to be or whether we're just going to be sitting in the park on beanbags this time next week in terms of giving uh, the next update. And um, thank you for continuing to fly Matrix. Yeah, thank you for your support. And uh, we'll speak to you soon back here. Bye. Bye.